Hi everybody, welcome back to my channel. Um, today I want to do a kind of quick book chat, book review about a book that I've recently finished reading and haven't really spoken about it yet to anyone. Um, so I want to just kind of go through some of my thoughts. Um, this video wasn't structured or planned out so it may crash and burn but I have some faith and some hope. So the book that I want to talk about today is Madeline Miller's Circe. Now, some of you may already have heard of Madeline Miller. I think I'm getting some like crazy reflection of this book because look how shiny it is. Um, but this is her second novel. Her first novel was The Song of Achilles, um, which I haven't read. Um, I never got around to picking it up. Um, there was not any particular reason for it, but I always, I kind of saw it occasionally in the bookshop as well, I just didn't really look into it, but then I started to hear a lot of praise around it, and then came across this, and this was just on the front shelf at my local Waterstones, and I mean, I was drawn in by the cover instantly, because it's beautiful, and it's golden, um, yeah, it's golden because it's relating to the sun, which comes into this novel, obviously. Um, but yeah, it's such a nice cover, and also there's a fetching little map inside, and I'm partial to a little bit of mapping. Um, I have loved fantasy my whole life, since I was very, very, very young. And, of course, fantasy novels are just really well known for coming parceled with a map. Parceled with a map? Well, they come with a map in them, just to help you navigate your way around the world in case you can't picture it yourself, and beyond that, just so that you don't picture it incorrectly. So yeah, this map is a map of Aiea. I think that's how you pronounce it. It's not Aiea, it's Aiea, I think. This is the island that, spoiler alert, Cersei ends up getting exiled to, and she starts to kind of cultivate and grow, and kind of she becomes a part of that island, she embodies the nature of that island. So for those of you who haven't heard of this book and do not know anything about it, it is a retelling of multiple Greek myths tied together under the character of Circe. Now, all that I knew about Circe prior to picking up this novel was that I knew about her in relation to Homer's The Odyssey and the journey that Homer, that Homer embarks on, that Odysseus embarks upon, and she plays host to him on her the island of Aiea. Um, I knew that she was famous for turning Odysseus's crew, his ship crew, into pigs, and she kind of gets a bit of a bad rap sometimes, and is painted in a bit of that, you know, generic witchy light however people like to think of witches, um, but this novel really turns that all around and as a retelling, which I'm always kind of nervous about when it comes to retelling of Greek myths and Roman myths and stuff like that, but actually this one, I very quickly lost that discomfort. This is an excellent, I just want to say it straight away, this is an excellent exploration into the character of Circe. It pulls all the little myths together, and they're not little myths, they're massive myths that we know, but this novel kind of makes them smaller and incorporates it into her story so that we are at all times entirely focused on her story. We don't get caught up with Odysseus, we don't get caught up with Prometheus or the Minotaur, we just, you know, follow her story. And it's really interesting actually because obviously we're following the course of her life through thousands of years, you know, she's immortal, she's a Greek god, daughter of a titan, she, oh yeah, by the way, she is the daughter of Helios who is the Greek god of the sun. And even though we're following her life for thousands of years, this is undeniably a coming of age story and it feels very true to being human. Even though we're constantly reminded of the fact she's not human, she is, as a character, always toying with the idea of humanity and what it means to be human and what it means to be a god. And yet I found myself fully able to identify with her, even though I have not had any of the same experiences as Circe has, but she is an extremely relatable and powerfully emotional character, even though at times she is presented as being cold and, and you know, vengeful and at times mean and, you know, filled with pain, but also she is very emotionally deep. She's emotionally driven and is the centre point, obviously, in this novel. I think, as an exploration into Circe, that is fantastic. 
there is a quote in the book that says witches are not so delicate and it's really powerful because in the beginning she, as a daughter of Helios, is kind of presented as lacking. You know, she physically is not supposed to be as aesthetically beautiful as her siblings. She's not supposed to, you know, her voice doesn't sound the same. She's got a very basic human voice and all of these things that paint her as ordinary in the eyes of the gods that to humans is still extremely impressive and beautiful and awe-inspiring but you know she doesn't shine as brightly as her father the sun the god of the sun um, and all her family have golden hair and the the yeah the emanate light essentially and she doesn't and this is something that kind of makes her a castaway and as a result from an early age she's always looking to impress her father and make him happy and make her family happy and fit in without standing out too much. This is something that is then kind of flipped around as we progress through the novel and it's really interesting to watch. I wasn't sure how it was going to go from the beginning and how she was going to, you know, come to this figure of the Witch of Aiea, but she is not, I mean personally I found anyway, her experiences even though they are supposed to have made her bitter and vengeful, even though there are moments where you can see why that would be. I couldn't lose sight of the fact that she was a very emotional character and she was a very caring, empathetic character. Her very first action that caused the chain of events that cast her away from her house with her father and siblings and the house of the gods was her love for a human and her deep burning love for a human, her first love, um, where she turns him into a god and then through her powers, and that's how she discovers her powers, but through the discovery of her powers she's also cast away and she's rejected again and even when she was on Aiea you have this sense that she has this burning power that will push her through. So yeah, as I said, all of the little myths that Miller uses in this book are kind of brought together and intricately weaved together to create the fabric that is Circe's life here. All of the passing characters that we know like Achilles and Hercules and Prometheus and Helios and Athena, they all revolve around Circe. They are all parts of her life, not the other way around. And it gives you an entirely different vantage point of viewing these very popular myths that we all know and some of us know very well, some of us don't know so well, but we all know elements of these myths and it's extremely exciting to kind of come at them knowing oh I've heard about this but you're looking at it in a different light and that always reveals something new and I mean that's what I love about fiction more than anything is its ability to show you new aspects to either other fictional retellings or life or the world. It's just constantly revealing different layers around us that we might otherwise not see. This book is an excellent way of accessing Greek mythology. Sometimes the Greek myths, you know, can be presented in quite a fragmented way and they can be difficult to access and they can be difficult to understand and interpret and for me as well, as a, as a female reader, I can always find it so hard to identify with some of the obviously fantastic female characters in, in Greek mythology, who I find often end up coming across a little bit flat and two-dimensional and just there, you know, to serve the greater narrative, that is, those of the males like your Achilles and Hercules. And so retellings such as this are so necessary and also yeah, as I said before, they just give you such a different access point into these myths that then might inspire you to read more. And I, for one, want to go back now and read more about Circe and read up on more of the literature in Circe because I find her fascinating. And of course she could be such a fascinating character. Also, one of the things I wanted to touch on in this chat about the book is um, the idea of motherhood. This is kind of a spoiler section, but I just couldn't speak about it without talking about Cersei becoming a mother. Obviously I'm not a mother, I don't know what it is like to have a child. As I said before, I haven't experienced any of the things really that Cersei has in this novel, but one of the things that resonated so strongly with me for some reason was her interaction and introduction to motherhood and maybe that comes because of some of the fears I have or some of the thoughts I have about it, I don't know, but Cersei ex you know, is is introduced to motherhood in a very kind of startling and intense way. It's one of the things that make her so emotional and engaging as a character. I actually 
found myself when I was closing the book thinking about her experience with motherhood when I was, you know, eating and then even I dreamt about it a few times, some of the scenes in the book. For her, motherhood isn't easy, it's very hard and it takes, you know, you kind of have this idea of her already as being this powerful witch and this goddess. She obviously has power and she can't die so you just, you don't tend to really worry about her but there's a moment when she's giving birth and it's such a startling experience for her and then as a result the reader as well. Um, there's a quote that I just want to read that says, I did not go easy to motherhood. I faced it as soldiers face their enemies, girded, embraced, soared up against the coming blows, yet all my preparations were not enough. And it's just kind of that the power of motherhood, I suppose. It's comparing it to the soldiers facing their enemies, which so many of these Greek myths revolve around the idea of men going to war and men being victorious and bringing back honor to their family whilst the women stay at home. And here, you know, Circe is saying that it is the same as men going to war. That's what she feels like. She's bracing it in the same kind of way, with the same kind of strength. And obviously as well she's saying all oh, my preparations aren't enough and it's because up until that point we've seen her build this new life for herself on this island and we've seen her you know deal with her sister and her sister's child and she's faced it all successfully and she's been in control of it all and you felt very certain and sure of that and then there comes this moment where she's giving birth to a child that is fathered by a human you don't know what the outcome's going to be and it's the first time you really kind of question what's going to happen to her and if she can deal with this and then the resulting bond and relationship that forms with her and her son Telegenus afterwards is very very interesting and is one of my favourite parts of the book actually the way that she feels so powerfully protective of her son that I felt as though I knew what that feeling was, even though I've never had a child. And obviously then there is that question of because of her relationships with humans and the way that she has come to understand and love humanity, um, it, it makes you, you know, she has that question where she's always worried about living on whilst those she loved doesn't. And it's kind of a question we all think about, I think, you know, in the darkest parts of her mind, or not the darkest parts, but the deepest kind of more secret parts of her mind. We always worry that we outlive all of those that we love and where are we after that and who do we have after that? And these are the kind of questions that this novel um, made me think about, I suppose. And I found that really interesting because I wasn't expecting my apologies if this has moved slightly, the battery ran out, that's the second time. Um, and yeah, I wasn't really expecting to feel as connected as I did to the character of Cersei. I don't know why, I think it's just because of my kind of preconceptions about myths and some of the mythical retellings I've read so far. Um, I have never really been able to overstep the fact that, oh, this is a Greek god or goddess and how can I feel like them? But obviously one of the innermost turmoils within the book is Circe's desire or unknown desire to be human and her constant grappling between the two um, parts of her identity, I suppose. And it's definitely something that made me want to just pick it straight back up and read it again. I didn't, but this is probably a book I will definitely go back and read again, just because I fell in love with Circe as a character, um, with the flaws as well in her character and some of the bad things that she did do, but I just fell in love with her. And as I said, I'm now super interested in going out to find more about her. And I think that's one of the great things about this book in particular. You do not have to have read Greek Greek myths, any of the Greek myths to really understand this or find it interesting on its own it is enough, on its own it is a good enough story. She doesn't rely on the mythical side of it all, she doesn't rely on the legacy of those myths but obviously the fact that those myths do have a legacy and are present in here adds to the kind of I don't know, heft of the story. On the other side, if you do have an understanding of the myths, if you're willing to kind of step away and just be willing to, you know, be open to interpretation, this book doesn't stray so far from them that it doesn't make sense. That she's, you know, taking liberties with them or anything like that. 
either from either angle you come from it I think there is a lot to be gained from this book for both kinds of readers and I would highly recommend reading it if you haven't already because as a result I'm now going to read The Song of Achilles and it's next, it's due on my doorstep tomorrow actually and I can't wait to read it. I'm hoping that it's similar because her writing style is very good. It's definitely literary but it's not that kind of high literary that's really hard to get into and hard to follow. It's very clearly written, you know, there's clarity there I suppose. The narrative flows and it doesn't get hung up on airy fairy prose or anything like that but it flows well. Um, but yeah, so before I ramble on anymore if you haven't already read this book and you think you would be interested in A, just getting to know Greek mythology a little bit more, or B, you'd be interested in a kind of fantastical, mythical story, then do pick this up. It is definitely worth reading. And yeah, I'm looking forward to reading The Song of Achilles and hopefully I'll be able to check back in with that book and let you know how I get on with it. So I hope you all have a lovely week, weekend, whenever this video is uploaded and I will see you in the next next video. So bye! I always never know how to finish videos.